Hello, hello. Today we're going to be looking at AC maximum power transfer with Thevenin's theorem together. So that coupling is very effective. In other words, we're going to use uh, Thevenin's theorem to simplify a more complex circuit and once having reduced it, we'll be able to use the maximum power transfer theorem. So as example, we're going to do a, uh, a little current source over here. All right, so I'll start up with a little AC current source and the associated internal impedance on this, like so. This is going to feed a little resistor and finally we have our load out here. Okay, so here's our ZL. And for values, we're going to say that the current source is 0.1 amp at 0 degrees. That is, of course, an RMS value. Uh, the resistor will be 200 ohms. The inductor, 500 microhenries. This resistor is 50 ohms. And the system frequency is 50 kilohertz. Now what we would like to find is that value of load impedance that will produce the maximum load power. In the process we're going to find the Thevenin equivalent of this. Right? As it is, trying to find that optimized value which you might recall is the complex conjugate of a, a, a simple internal impedance here we have a much more complex circuit, so we're going to have to simplify that, right? Um, and then once we find out what that uh, appropriate value for ZL, ZL is, then we can figure out what the load power is. So the very first thing we have to do here is determine, of course, the value of the inductive reactance. So XL is equal to 2 pi FL. The frequency in this case is 50 kilohertz. The inductance is 500 microhenries. And when we grind through that, we're going to get J157 ohms for the inductor. All right. Now let's take a look at the uh, Thevenin value here. All right. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, figure out the value for these two components. Right. What is 200 in parallel uh, with the J157? All right. We're going to need that for a couple of different things, actually. So that happens to work out to uh, 76.3 ohms resistive plus J97.2. All right, so that's what this pair happens to be. Now, the total Thevenin impedance, so we would sit here at the uh, load looking back in this way, right? This is our viewpoint, if you will. So I want to look back in this, this way and Thevenize. Um, what we would do is replace the current source with its ideal internal impedance, which would be an open. And what we wind up with is this parallel combo, com combo the 157, and uh, the 50 ohm in series. Right? So the total Z Thevenin on this thing is going to be essentially this value plus 50 ohms. Okay, so that's our that's our Z Thev. So 50 plus that is going to get us 126.3 plus J97.2. All right, now we're part way along here. Um, ultimately, what we're going to be working for is this. I know I've got 126.3 uh, real, 97.2 um, inductive. So almost there. 
I would have to, in the real world, turn this into um, an inductance value rather than inductance, inductive reactance. And that's not too hard to do, right? I mean, we have our um, X of L equation for that. If we solve that in terms of L, right, X of L is equal to 2 pi FL, so L would be XL over 2 pi F. And if we put in 50 kilohertz for that and our 97.2, this will work out to 309 microhenries, right? So that's another way of describing that, right? 309 microhenries. Now, this form is such that we know we're going to need a capacitor here, right? I want the um, magnitudes of the inductive reactants and capacitive reactants to be the same. Opposite signs, obviously, right? So it's going to be a minus J97.2. And then the resistive parts will be the same. So this impedance right here, this, if this is my ZL, 126.3 minus J97.2, that will get us the uh, maximum mode power. <clears throat> okay, so far so good. Um, I probably would like to know what the 97.2, the minus J, is there as a capacitor. So we'll do the same kind of thing we did over here, utilizing uh, the capacitive reactance formula. All right, so we could say, well, you know, C would have to equal 1 over 2 pi F times X sub C. So we'll throw in 50 kilohertz for this. We'll throw in the, the uh, minus 97.2, um, and that will work out the 32.8 nanofarads. Okay, so far so good. Um, that part of it's done. In other words, we, we know what the load has to be to get maximum power. We don't really know what the maximum power is yet, right? We have to do a little bit more. Uh, one of the things we have to do is complete our Thevenin equivalent. We have to find out what E Thevenin is. All right, what do we get for that thing? Okay, so to find E Thevenin, um, you might remember that we need to find the open circuit output voltage. So we go back to the original circuit, and what we're going to do is uh, open this, in other words, pull off our Z load, okay, and basically find out what the voltage is out here. Now, the 50 ohm is just sort of hanging out here in space. There's no current that's going to be passing through it with this open, which means that the voltage drop across the 50 will be zero. In other words, the open circuit voltage that we're trying to get here is the same as the voltage that's over here. Consequently, E Thevenin would have to be the value of the current source, right? whatever that is, I, the 0.1 amps there, times this combo impedance that we found back here. right? So that's going to be 0.1 amps at an angle of 0 degrees times 76.3 plus 97.2, oops, forgot my J in there. Um, and when we multiply out there, we're going to come up with our E Thevenin, which is 12.4 at an angle of 51.9 degrees. Okay, uh, you might notice angle's a little bit more than 45 degrees. It's positive. You know, looking at this, that seems to make sense. We have more inductive reactants than we have resistance in this, in this combo. Um, so that's a reasonable looking value. Now, coming back here, right, if this is 12.4 as a magnitude, okay, that would be RMS, of course, because our current is RMS. So let's be very specific about that. That's RMS volts. Um, one thing we noticed about uh, maximum power when we have this sort of configuration, because the plus and minus J cancel, this voltage is going to split evenly between the two resistive parts. Right? So if I want to find the load power, right, which again is the maximum load power, we could simply take that E Thevenin voltage, cut it in half, right, that'll give us the part for here, take that, square it, right, V squared over R basically, divide that by the resistive part of my load. Um, so 
12.4 cut in half is going to get us 6.2. So you take 6.2 volts, you'll square that. And then um, the resistive piece, 126.3. Now remember, we don't have to throw any angles in here. Um, the current and the, uh, the voltage will be in phase, even though this actually has an angle associated with it. That's not important for our purposes because the current's going to have the same exact, same exact angle. Right? These two things cancel, so we end up at this frequency anyway, at 50 kilohertz, we end up with a purely resistive circuit. So anyway, um, dividing, uh, dividing this out, we wind up with... 304.4 milliwatts. Okay? All right, now that is again the maximum power that we can develop in here, and at that point the efficiency will be 50%. So, not overly efficient, but the biggest possible power that we could ever hope to get in this load. All right, so this idea of using Thevenin's theorem, it's uh, very handy using in conjunction with maximum power. So if you have anything beyond just a simple uh, little series kind of source with internal impedance, you're going to have to go to something like this. You're going to have to simplify the circuit where the um, impedance of interest, where the load impedance happens to be. You have to cut it there, figure out what the Thevenin equivalent is. You're going to wind up with something like this, and then you know immediately, okay, I'll just get my complex conjugate of this, and that'll be the maximum power case, right? That's the sort of straightforward way of doing it, right? All right, beauty.